Hi everybody, I have the pleasure to have with me Mr. Vikram Shankar. How are you doing Vikram? I'm doing well. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming back to us. And then I remember uh, last year we had this interview. We spoke about uh, lots of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, lots of things. But uh, now there's something new. Um, it's uh, this uh, new album. Nectar. Yeah. There it is. yeah. So let's talk about this album. Yes. What, what can we say? Uh, what can we say um, for for the for for that uh, for that new new album? Um, the the experience uh, with uh, with Tom last year uh, for the first album uh, was so good that you you wanted uh, to to make uh, another one. Yeah. Um, even before we had finished the first album we knew that there was going to be a second and probably a third and a fourth because you know we we realized through doing the first album that we have a certain creative synergy together that we didn't necessarily foresaw us having you know that that we we really had some kind of special partnership that we would be fools to throw away so we dove right in uh thanks to the you know, unfortunately horrible pandemic situation. It also meant that we had time and Tom wasn't on the road with Evergrey or something. So we could just hole up and write. And so the first album took two years to write and this one took three months. So I guess we were inspired. Three months. Yeah. And to, to record as well. So, I mean, we were, <laughs> we flew through the process. It was when we started writing in February, I didn't know by late May we would be done with everything. But I mean, it's what happens when you're inspired. You just have to chase it where it goes. I've erased everything that got under my skin. One step closer and in my inner search for wins. Let me uh, take uh, this. It's a, it's a comment on, uh, you know, your, um, your video clip. And it's a question, if there's a story concept behind the Nectar album, or is it an album of personal experiences? That's a comment of uh, Dane Herbst. Yeah, it's, it's not a linear concept album in, such, in the sense that there's a, you know, a story with a protagonist and anything like that. But it, it is an album of personal experiences, and that makes it, I guess, a kind of concept album in its own sense it's like the uh, the concept of the human experience and the things that tom and i have been through the things that we've had our loved ones go through and the ways that that has affected us so i mean yeah it's, it's personal everything we write is is really really personal and honest because i think that's the best and easiest way for us to make something great is to be honest yeah yeah of course um this um it's the same atmospheric ambient uh, music um, atmosphere uh, than the uh, the first album yeah it's it's similar i mean we're the part of the first album was we we kind of had to figure out who we were because when we started working on the first album we knew we wanted to make cinematic music with vocals, but we didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. You know, because, you know, what, what is, you know, we couldn't really go to Spotify and say, hey, you know, check out this song. We're going to make exactly this. Because a lot of the music that we're inspired by, you know, it, it's usually written for film or TV or something. And so it does, it's not a song. It usually doesn't have vocals. It doesn't have a song structure. It doesn't have, you know, hooks and strong vocal melodies. So we had to kind of figure out what that combination was. On Nectar, we kind of knew to an extent who we were. So we were able to just 
ride the foundation that we had on the first album, but then try to bring in some fresh vibes and some fresh experimentation, which mainly kind of manifested in certain instrumental choices. Like there's a bit more synthesizer and percussion stuff on the album. It's a little bit less driven by just piano and strings, and it's a little bit more like piano synths and some strings as well. So it's, it's an expansion, if you will, in that way. About category, I found this comment. Man, this is good. It's not metal. It's not pop. It's not adult contemporary. Uh, there's no way to categorize this uh, other than to say that um, it's real and it's beautiful. It's art. I don't want to be all uh, preachy or whatever, but uh, the way Tom and Vikram are able to convey emotion is just uh, outright fucking astonishing. Man, that's a great comment. Where are you finding these comments? I haven't seen these. These are nice. <laughs> YouTube, man. <laughs> YouTube on your video I, clip on the last one. I need to <laughs> dig through the comments better. That's a good one. Yeah. So uh, we can say, okay, it's not metal. It's not pop. It's not other contemporary. This is uh, cinematic music. Yeah. I mean, the, there is a certain amount of difficulty to give yourself a genre when you don't really fit into a box. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's just the, the fact of the matter when we, on both albums that we released uh, on different record labels, we had the same conversation of, you know, when you submit an album to the digital distribution with the, you know, iTunes or whatever, you have to give it a genre tag. Yeah. And it's like, what, what do we, give this album like what is the genre tag to this album i can say it in multiple words i can say it's cinematic music classical electronic ambient whatever there are all these different sides to it but if you were to pick one it's really hard because it's not pure classical music it's not pure soundtrack because it's not a, like an actual soundtrack to a uh, existing film or tv show so you can't actually call it soundtrack so then, so then what do you call it? And I think, I don't even know what we settled on for this one. It, <laughs> it's either ambient or pop. The first one was, the first album was pop, I know. So it's just, it just tough. It's tough to put yourself in a box and that has a blessing and a curse because it means that if someone is trying to, you know, find a certain type of pop music, you know, we may not come up because we're not immediately labeled as pop to some people. But at the same time, there's a beauty to that because it means that we can kind of go wherever we want to go. And so we don't really have any walls up as to Silent Skies is this and we can't be this. You know, we can't bring in this influence. You know, we we pretty much have the freedom to do whatever we want with this project, which is really, really exciting and not something that a lot of artists have the privilege to have. Faint scars on my body, fragments of where I've been, sparse echoes from heartbeats. I had um, an interview uh, recently with uh, Jan, you know, uh, I don't know if you know uh, the band, uh, it's a post-rock band, uh, there's a light that are in Napalm Record and are, are going to... Um, I, I know uh, of them, yeah. I you know of them, okay. So he told me uh, that uh, now, nowadays, with Spotify, Deezer and streaming, you know, there's no more the, um, how you say it, um, the tyranny of the 3 minute 30, you know, song that has to be um, fit for radio, you know, programmation. Because now with Spotify and all this, um, you know, um, streaming um, uh, thing, uh, you can have a song with 6 or 10 minutes. Yeah, okay, it's okay. The, the, the listener will listen to it if he likes it. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly true. I mean... There's a certain amount of democratization that happens when you have a medium where, you know, no one is really telling you 
what to listen to. And, and if you, you know, you don't have radio saying you have to listen to this three minute single by this artist, you know, you have every, pretty much every song ever recorded and released at your fingertips. And that's also a dangerous thing because it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle. <laughs> There's so much music out there. Yeah. It's, you know, it just means that in order to really rise to prominence in today's day and age, you have to really have something special, you know, either you have to be really, really good or really, really unique, or there has to be some kind of selling point to make it special because uh, mediocrity doesn't really cut it anymore, which is, I mean, pr probably a good thing, I'd say on the whole. Feels like I've lost control Cause my heart is too old While my soul is too young Um, I dig metal. It's the name of the the channel uh, that uh, put a comment. I've fallen up a record for the metal. This isn't very metal. So there were some answers, you know. Um, Aquila I like said uh, <laughs> there are several no metal bands on Napalm uh, Records. I dig metal. I actually didn't know that. And Tom England said, "You are correct. This is not metal." <laughs> <laughs> At least he knows what genre he's singing. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's um, of course I, I understand. You know, fans uh, that goes to um, a metal level uh, to uh, and, and its channel. Uh, you know, YouTube channel. I find you know bands like you or like uh, there's a lot that uh, are not metal at all. You know, it's uh, it's another genre. Yeah, yeah, and and you know people can be forgiven for being like really thrown off by that, or or you know if you're a diehard metal fan and you hear something that's not metal and you don't like it, you know that's that's fine, really. I mean, someone's personal taste is a beautiful thing, and I think you know it's the least I can do is respect that. But I think both for Napalm Records, the label, and also for fans of metal. I think a lot of people in the metal world understand why there is a place for silent skies in that world because metal music is very emotional. It doesn't really matter what the metal music is and what emotion it's expressing because there's a lot of metal that's exhilarating or angry or chaotic or depressing or, or, or joyous. It doesn't matter. Emo metal wears its emotions on its sleeve. And, you know, most metal fans who like metal appreciate that. So I think when they hear other music that also wears its emotion on its sleeve and is very, very atmospheric and melancholic and dark, I think a lot of metal fans recognize that there's some, some kinship there between us and a lot of other metal bands that express similar things, but, you know, they have distorted guitars and drums and we have piano and synthesizers but you know we're trying to say many of the same things and i think that's why we've been so fortunate to have so many people in the metal world really appreciate what we have to do there's there's french singer uh, bernard lavillier who said that if a song can be sung you know with only a guitar that's a good song i agree i mean i think the best songs can be stripped down to just you know of a piano and a, or a guitar and a vocal and you know the song should still work and a lot of great metal songs that have a ton of guitar and drums and everything you can play an acoustic version with the guitar and a voice and it still sounds freaking great it may not you know have the same volume and energy that a, the full metal version does but it can still be a great song and we write the silent skies music very much with that in mind that if you wanted to turn these songs into metal songs and you wanted to add distorted guitars and drums, you, you could and they, and they would still work. And then if you just take away the distorted guitars and the drums and you replace it with the synthesizers and the percussion and the piano, you know, it still works. I think it's great that there are a lot of listeners who have really picked up on that.
So let's remember this album, Silent Nectar of Silent Skies, um, on the first um, first week of February the fifth, I think. Um, so uh, I'm going to um, to make you see uh, some of the uh, comments that you didn't see, you know. Um, on sure. the <laughs> um, so let's go. Here it is. His first. Uh, Napoleon put so many videos. I usually just uh, play them and skip through uh, clicking on the timelines. I started doing that to this video, then I stopped. Then I backtracked and listened a bit. Then I went to the beginning and listened to the full song. Glad, glad I did it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. I mean, it, it is really not really the kind of music that you can just jump around and listen to five seconds and get the picture because we take our time with the music. You know, we, we let the song take the amount of time that it needs to grow and develop. And that means that we're not giving everything away in the first five seconds. And, you know, I know that there's some people who they're just going to click through, but it's really cool to see H2671 took the time to really, you know, Yeah. Take the song in its entirety. That's how it's supposed to be listened. And it's another one. I'm lost in space and time. My body, sound, and mind are paralyzed. Breathtaking. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. I love that. So uh, we need to be uh, near an hospital when we want to listen to the silence, guys. Just in case, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> it looks like it. You may have to, you know, have your emergency room nearby if you're going. <laughs> And walk away from this with paralysis. Although I guess you're not walking away if you're paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I, I cannot stop replaying it. Tom and Vikram, you guys are just amazing. Oh, man. Well, you'll have to stop replaying it tomorrow when our next single comes out. And then you can replay. You can replay that. Yeah, yeah. Um... We... we, we uh, last time when we... Um, When we spoke, you know, last year ago, mm -hmm. um, we spoke a lot about, uh, you know, uh, Tom's voice. And yeah. uh, here it is. The best voice in all words. I'm a huge fan. You're a great influence for my work. Thank. And um, Tom <laughs> answered, thank you so much. Um, another yeah. one. Uh, Tom England has a very rare and special gift, the most emotive singer I have ever heard. Uh, you know, a song special when it just blows you away on the first listen. He does have a rare and special gift. This Mark is correct. I mean, yeah. I, I always felt that way before I was fortunate enough to work with him on not just one, but several projects. But I've I've always thought that The way that he emotes is so special and so in short supply in, you know, modern metal, especially. So, you know, spot on, Mark. Um, and just uh, for fuck's sake, Tom England always hits me deep when it hurts. Um, my heart shrinks, shivers down uh, my spine, uh, goosebumps, uh, my word silenced, paralyzed from head to toe, a voice so cold and gloom, it cuts through skin, but then again, so warm and angelic at the same time. I'm in O, uh, words can't express, it's beautiful in every way possible, superb. Man, That's between this and the, between this and the paralysis, you really need to have a, a hospital in your. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have skin cuts now too. That's, yeah, yeah, that, that's good. yeah, that's marvelous. That's that's a good that's, comment. I like I like the idea that his voice is simultaneously cold and warm. That's that's actually a very thought provoking sentiment because our music. I think in, in general is that way too, because it's very, very dark and brooding and depressing in a sense, but also, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel and there's some beautiful stuff there and some almost, you know, I'd even go as far as to say some uplifting music on the album as well. And, you know, all of us have that within us. We all have dark and we have light. And so we make 
honest music that's a reflection of ourselves. And so since we have dark and light within, so too does the music. And so too do the fans who listen to it. So I think that's really cool. I've lost control Cause my heart is too old While my soul is too young I think this um, this is an exercise that every uh, metal singer should do, singing with uh, Vikram Shankar, <laughs> or maybe it's, because it's um, yeah. you know uh, you you when so, uh, somehow sometimes you listen to to singers, but um, you know uh, we don't have really, um, we don't know really the power of the voice because there's music, there's guitar, there's drums, you know, but uh, when there's only you and uh, a keyboard, that's yeah. the truth come, I think. Sure. Yeah. And it's, it's not very, every, not every singer can do this exercise, you know. I agree. I'm, and But it's it just goes both ways. It's the same for me because... You know, there's a difference between playing keyboards in a metal band and playing piano in Silent Skies where, you know, every little detail is very, very exposed. You know, we don't leave ourselves any room to hide in the songs, in the arrangements. It's just, you know, it's there. It's kind of the the naked truth, if you will. So, you know, I, I agree that, you know, the best singers can excel in this very stripped down environment as well. I, I've always loved listening to a great singer do like an acoustic version or something. And, you know, that really tests, you know, how, how good actually is the singer? Can they, can they bring it when they're not being buried by the modern production and everything? So, and plus I too think every single great singer should work with me. I, I, <laughs> I sign on to this. That sounds like a good way to pitch my business. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Which one would you like to uh, to to um, to call? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I could go for like my favorite singer, or I could go for like just a really big singer who's gonna, you know, make sure I'd never have to work another day in my life. But I think if I worked with Adele, I'd accomplish both because she's amazing and one of the biggest singers in the world. So we're gonna Adele. say Adele. Yeah, hit me up. Yeah, Adele. Okay, <laughs> uh, Robert Plant. I would not say no to that. Zeppelin's been a big influence on me for many, many years. Yeah. I also but, uh, think Robert Plant is, I'm probably the only person on earth who thinks this, but I actually think he's better now than he's ever been because I think he, he got older and he lost his really high notes, but his voice became a lot warmer at the same time. And so if you listen to like the Robert Plant, Alison Krauss music yeah. that he does, or, or even the last Led Zeppelin live album from like whenever, what, 15 years ago now at this point, like he, he just sounds so good and so warm and he's, he's learned how to do things with his voice that are not just soaring up really high and singing really loud, which is a lesson that probably a lot of metal singers could learn from too. And uh, the very extraordinary thing with Robert Plant, because I had the, the pleasure to make him an interview, but a long time ago, you know, in 2004 oh, wow. cool. or six, you know, and um, he told he told me uh, um, in the interview something. He told me I'm not trusty. That's very important, I think, because he's always challenging himself, and I think a musician or a singer has to challenge himself for things like this, you know, to to go in. Um, yeah. Um, you know, um, on, on streets that they don't know without Google Maps, you know. I, I completely agree. And, and it's all the more impressive when like a, an older musician who's, who's already made their name and they're successful and Robert Plant doesn't have to work another day in his life if he doesn't want to, but he wants to keep pushing himself. Actually, um, Alex Lifeson of Rush released a song today with a new band and it sounds nothing like he's anything he's ever done in 50 years. It's like there's a beautiful female voice and it's very electronic. It sounds like almost a gathering or something. Yeah. And I think that's really, really cool to be, you know, he made rush music for 50 years 
he doesn't owe the world anything, but he still wants to push himself. And, you know, I can only hope that when I'm at that, at that age, I will be doing the same thing. But uh, you're doing the same thing, I think, with Sun and Skies, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's that way for, for both Tom and I, because Silent Skies gives us that opportunity to walk down, you know, the roads we've never been without Google Maps, as you say. It's like, you know, we, we, or, you know, we're out there without a safety net, you know, making music that people wouldn't have expected of us. And it's not really the easy, the easy thing to do, to make something that you've not really made before and test new waters, but it's so much more rewarding than just doing the, the same thing for 15, 20 years or even five years. You know, I, I constantly want to try new things, but maybe that's just ADHD. I don't know. I feel this hard to cold Yet the world is much colder Vikram, let's talk about the, um, the artwork of the album. How did you yeah. choose it? We like artwork that's a little bit more minimal and leaves a little bit more to interpretation. I think it, it's classy. Like the, the Satellites album cover was very simple as well. It, it looks like something that if you walked into a record shop and you went to the, the used record section and you pulled out a record from 1972, it might look like that. And we love that. We love that simplicity. We love that elegance. And the Nectar cover is much the same way. We knew that we wanted something a little different from the first album. So something, you know, maybe without our ugly faces on it and something a little bit more poetic. But we, we ended up going with this kind of hand-drawn aesthetic for the entire album look. So... The booklet is done much the same way with these beautiful, haunting, almost half-formed sketches. And the music video for Taper is much the same with many of the same, you know, sh uh, shape-shifting characters just animated. And I think it's, it's, it's beautiful to not show people everything and to let them... You do a little bit of thinking and feeling on their own rather than us telling them exactly what everything is about and exactly what you should feel while listening to it. I never felt like I stepped out of the night and were you watching me fight all of this? Because we never felt... How did you work on this album? Okay, you work from three months, but uh, we know that uh, Tom is in Stockholm. You are in the States. Uh, long distance between you. Yeah, yeah. We, we did satellites mostly long distance as well. Uh, just working in our respective home studios and sending files back and forth via email. And... The difference is that on satellites, I flew to Sweden to record the piano parts. Yeah. I did it at a studio outside of Gothenburg with Tom. And on this album, we didn't do anything like that. We finished all of our parts on our respective continents, as it were. But one difference is that we worked very closely on Zoom together. We were on Zoom together for four hours a day for three months, I'd say. Like just lots and lots of zoom time. And so what we would do is we'd work on songs together. And if I wanted to go try something on a synthesizer or something, I could just walk over and try it in real time. Tom could listen in real time and we could edit it together in real time. So what that meant is that it worked the same way for Tom's vocals is that if we wanted to try something, we could just go try it in five minutes, refine it together Because, you know, we could screen share on Zoom and I could say, hey, you know, this point here on the song, make a cut here. You know, we had that visual element as well, which is really cool. And so it ended up being really, really efficient. And it's actually in a weird way more efficient than working in person because we have two computers and we're in two different rooms. Mm. So we're on Zoom, but then 
if Tom needs to concentrate and focus to nail a vocal part, you know, he can just put me on mute and disappear for five minutes and I, I'm not going to bother him with whatever I'm doing. I can work on like a drum part, for instance. And then we can meet up in five minutes and say, hey, you know, while you were doing this, I did this. And so it, it's kind of like a, like a superhuman way of, of working together by having actually the, the distance and also the time difference. Because while the time difference sucks for most people trying to work together, we made it work because Tom would wake up and maybe he'd work starting at his eight in the morning. I'm still asleep at that time. It's, it's two at night here. By the time I wake up and I head to the studio at my eight in the morning, he's already been working for six hours. So he shows me, hey, while you were asleep, I did all of this. And then we work together for another four hours refining it. And then he goes to sleep. And then I work another six to eight hours, you know, just working on the progress that we had built together in person. So we ended up having like 18 hour work days, yet both of us still getting sleep because we were able to kind of take over when the other person passed out. So it's like, I don't know if I'd always want to work remotely like this on subsequent albums, but we actually really, really made it work. We ended up really getting a system that worked for us. Yeah. So, uh, Maybe uh, you should have called this album not Nectar, but Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Zoom was such a, such a defining element of it. But what was also defining was struggles with Zoom. Because as <laughs> anyone who's ever used Zoom knows, it's really, really frustrating to make it work with the tech, the tech side of things. Especially, we wired in our studios so that whatever I'm doing in my DAW, which is logic, whatever he's doing in Pro Tools, we can hear it on Zoom and, you know, high quality stereo audio, the like live feed from the DAW, which is amazing. But also every single time we fired it up, it would take 20 minutes to troubleshoot it. Every single time, like three months down the road, you would have thought that we'd have nailed this. Nope. Yeah. 20 minutes to make it work. It's like, <laughs> it's so frustrating, but at the same time, you know, it ended up working well for us. Okay, Vikram, tell me um, some news of Cartagots. Are you working with them now, or? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't know um, if I'm spoiling a Tunisian secret by saying anything. I, I don't know. But, but, but I'll say that um, we, we had been talking a little bit. I mean, I, I, we're going to work together on whatever it is. But to be honest, I haven't spoken with them in a little bit of time. I don't really know where they're at in terms of the process. Because I was kind of on the last album, I was kind of brought in towards the end. And Timo had gone through and produced a lot of it with the guys in the band and then he brought me in kind of at the end to add in my keyboard parts. And the only thing that happened after me was the vocals and then mixing at this time. I don't know where there are in the pro in the process. So I can't speak to that except for that. I know that they want me to be part of it and I want to be a part of it. So it seems like it's going to happen. I just <laughs> have no idea when it was. We were, we were talking, I guess, almost a year ago now about doing something together. But, you know, it's a crazy time and people have lives. It's, it's hard to make things work so quickly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every one of them is on a different continent as well. Uh, Maddy is right. Canada, uh, Tarak is in Tunis, uh, Timu, Finland. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I think they, they're working. They're working on it. And uh, that's why I asked the question to, to know. <laughs> maybe yeah, uh, I mean, the progress, you know. Like, in the <laughs> it seems like you know as much as I do at this point. But, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what we can do together because. Uh, the monster in me was w one of the one of my favorite projects that I've actually worked on to date. So was, I really, really love those songs and love Timo. I'll, I'll I love doing anything that Timo's involved in. So 
here's hoping that maybe 2022 is our year, right? In the meantime, what are you doing now? Now that the uh, Silence Case album uh, is going, you know, uh, it's yeah. finished and it's going on sale. Well, we finished the second album and pretty much immediately started on the third album. Yeah. Because we're, we're workaholics. So, like, we, you know, we, we can't stop once we, once we start. But uh, that's important if you have inspiration to just go with it. So... We're working on Silent Skies 3. We have a few songs in the bag already for that, and, and they sound really cool. Um, I'm, I'm releasing, I guess, three albums of original music this year with Silent Skies, and then eventually Redemption will be releasing an album as well, although I don't have a date for that yet, but I, I suspect this year. And my, a band that I'm in called Threads of Fate as well is releasing an album in March. So... Got my hands full with that, and aside from that, I am basically at this point. I'm, I'm a my day job is a full time producer. I produce bands. I do orchestration, keyboards, mixing work, what, whatever the case may be. So I got my hands full with with that stuff. And last but 100 not least, Tom and I work on video game music together. That's something that we picked up during the pandemic. Is we started working with a big American company called Saber Interactive to write uh, write and produce music for some of their video games, which is really, really actually a, a kind of underestimated market because, you know, in a time where people are buying less and less music, they're buying more and more video games. So, I mean, that's like one of the most booming entertainment industries there is right now. And it's a really exciting space to be involved in. So Tom and I, but well, we co-write pretty much everything for the Saber Interactive stuff. And we're, I feel like always busy, always behind on a deadline, trying to, you know, scramble something together. That's what my week is here, is just cramming together some of those scores. So it looks like another ridiculously fruitful year, at least so far. Uh, not ridiculous, but um, I understood that uh, you, you uh, this uh, music that you uh, write for the uh, video games, you write it with them? Yeah, yeah. So we have a, a creative partnership that's kind of similar to Silent Skies where we, we have our respective things that we specialize in, but we are still kind of working on everything. Because in Silent Skies, Tom is the singer, so obviously he's... You know, he knows what he knows what he's doing when it comes to vocals, but he's also a great musician and producer. So, you know, he has ideas when it comes to piano parts and pr production things. And it's the same thing with the scoring, because we do a kind of like hybrid scoring that Saber Interactive is really liking from us, where we combine orchestral, you know, kind of traditional soundtrack stuff with a lot of rock and metal sides as well. So we're using guitars and drums and all this, but combining it with orchestra and keyboards and everything. So he handles most of the guitars and I handle most of the other stuff, but we write everything together and I play some guitar too, and he plays some piano. And so it's this basically like a, a free form 50, 50 thing where, you know, if one of us is inspired to do anything, we do it. And, You know, if if there's a particular time where Tom is busy and he can't record guitars, I'll just pick up one of mine and hammer it out. So it's like I, I can't escape Tom no matter what I do. It's like, <laughs> even even when I'm doing video game scores, he's he's there. He's my, he's my constant at this point. I feel a charge to call. Thank you very much, uh, Vikram. That was, uh, as usual, a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, likewise, man. It's, it's always great speaking to you. I had fond memories last time, and this was much the same. Thank you very much.
and uh, good luck for uh, and well, for, for good luck for for, for the next. Mm, yeah, thanks a lot, man. And you take care, stay safe, be well. You too. Zanzana, l'émission métal.